Good evening, everyone, and welcome, grade eight and nine parents, guardians, and students. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Carolyn Green, the principal of the senior school, and I'm very happy to be here with you this evening. And as noted in the previous slide, a couple of housekeeping items, if you can keep yourself muted during the presentation, just to avoid any of those background noises, um, that would be greatly appreciated. And also, you probably noticed that we are recording this presentation this evening for those families who are unable to attend. Uh, it will be made available through Blackboard over the next few days, and a copy of the slide should also be made available to families as well. Uh, we will be together from 6.30 until about 7.15, and then you are welcome to attend the next presentation for the grade 10 and 11 families and students. Uh, to do this, you will need to exit this Google Meet and enter the one provided for that presentation. I would like to begin this evening by acknowledging and respecting the Strait Salish peoples on whose traditional territories we are presenting from this evening. Specifically, we recognize the Algonquin peoples known as the Songhees Nation and the Esquimalt Nation, whose historical relationships with the land where we live, work, play and learn continue to this day. We are here this evening to provide you with a lot of information about course requests and the course request process. And so you may wish to have a notepad and pen with you to jot down any notes or questions that you may have. There will be a time at the end of the presentation to ask your questions and have them answered. I am your host this evening. And I am pleased to be able to introduce to you the GNS Senior School team who are working hard to support your student and you as you navigate this very important process. And in order of the presentation, we will start with Ms. Erin Dallin, who will talk with you about the various study pathways and course requests. I will address the changes that we've made to the French pathways for next year followed by Madam Angie Girard, who will talk more about the diploma program. And then we have two of our university guidance counselors with us this evening, Ms. Angie Kolibaba and Ms. Sarah McMillan. Unfortunately, Ms. Hannah Gottfried was unable to attend this evening. I will now hand you over to Ms. Erin Dallin. Thank you. Thank you. So much, everybody, for joining us. I uh, really appreciate the time that you're taking to spend with us as we go through some of the great opportunities that your students will have moving forward. Um, the first thing that I want to do is just highlight that the courses that we're moving into in grade 9 and 10 look very similar to what you've seen in the middle school for those students that are currently in grade 8. So you're still taking your language and literature, your individuals and societies, and so on. We view those as your core courses. And then as you move into grade nine, you're going to be making some choices that will carry you through as you move through the senior school. And those are the language acquisition courses and your arts choices. And so you can see on this list here that again, it's very similar to what you've already seen. We have our arts choice of visual arts, band or theater. And then in the language acquisition realm, you're choosing from French, Spanish, Mandarin. And you can also, if you are a newer language learner for English, there is also our English acquisition. One additional thing that you're going to be starting in grade nine um, is our career pathways courses, um, starting with career education nine and then moving into career life education 10. That leads into um, some further career life courses when you get into grade 11 and 12 designed to help you figure out pathways of education in university, things that you're finding our strengths and weaknesses and whatever it is that you need to be working towards um, to make sure that you are as successful as you can be moving forward. Um, next slide, slide, please, Ms. Green. So just a, a little bit more about those choices that you're making. Uh, when you are doing your course requests, you are going to have uh, all of the, the loaded courses already in the system for your core choices. Um, and then you're going to be able to select your arts and your language acquisition. You'll notice on this slide here that we have listed IB Mathematics and the Extended Math program. You will not be choosing between the two of those. And that's a really important thing that I want you all to know about. 
the extended math program, um, for those that aren't familiar with it, is a program designed for those students that are working towards our highest level of math in grade 11 and 12. We call it the higher level program. And they are IB courses. And often students who take those are ones that want to go into math at university or maybe into subjects that are more heavily dependent upon math. And the extended program in grade nine and 10 assists those students in making sure that they have the right foundation for success. The process is that you can begin talking with your math teacher now, if you're in grade eight and maybe thinking about this for grade nine, they'll then know that you're interested and, and you would be um, then basically on a, a list where we would figure out if you are in fact a good fit. It's really important that we put the right students into those courses because it is a little trickier. It's a lot more work that you're going to have to do leading up to those higher level courses in grade 11 or 12. For those that are in the extended program already in grade nine, if you are wishing to no longer be in that program, you also have the choice where you can talk with your teachers and, and choose to go on the regular math pathway. Um, so it's a, an open communication that's important. Um, parents, I hope that you're all involved with this as well, since it, it does impact a lot of what goes on um, day to day in a household. It's a little bit more work. You're learning more material. So definitely some decisions to be made. With our language acquisition pathways, what's important here is that you're understanding that you're choosing only one second language that you're going to be taking. So students currently in grade eight, you're taking a couple choices in a lot of cases. Now there's only one, and so you need to be careful with your choice to make sure it's the right one for you. There's a bit more information later in this presentation about our French pathways. Uh, and when we're looking at all of the choices we have, French, Spanish, or Mandarin, you're going to need to think about your strengths in which language you would prefer, knowing that you're going to be taking it for grade nine and grade 10, and possibly into grade 11 and 12. So thinking through that now is important. For those in grade nine, you're going to be continuing with the language that you are in, with some exceptions. Um, and if you are one of those people, you would probably already know about it and we would have had those conversations. Likewise with arts, grade eight's moving into grade nine, you're now only choosing one arts course. And this can be really tricky. I, I get a lot of students asking, why can't I pick two? Well, you pick one in the timetable and you, as you see here, there are also some choices outside the timetable. So let's say that you really wanna take uh, our theater or drama program, but you still want to be involved in some of our other choices. Um, you can take those as co-curriculars. Uh, one ex um, exception here is that to be in jazz band, you have to be in concert band as a course. So those have to go together. If you're taking visual arts, but you still wanna do theater, you can still perform in our productions by joining our theater company. So there is still opportunities to be involved in more than one of those arts choices. Uh, notable here is that what you choose in grade nine, we expect that you carry that through for grade 10. We're not switching arts from grade nine into 10. So really careful conversations need to be taking place now. Talk with your teachers. Maybe your home form advisor can be a part of this. Talk at home at the dinner table about what choice might be the best fit for you so that you're making the right choice for the next couple of years. Um, knowing that ahead of time, um, you can then, when course requests open on March 4th, make the right choices um, in our system. Um, so when um, you are going to be doing those course requests, requests again in Blackboard, um, you are welcome to reach out to me if you wish. Uh, my email is on this presentation. Um, you can also be looking at our program of studies for more information about the courses that we have and your classroom teachers are a great source of information about the courses in their department moving forward. I am going to pass it back to Ms. Green now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dallin. So uh, for the grade nine and 10 French classes next year, we're introducing phases. And these are to better support our students as they require language skills at different rates and it better matches the MYP rubrics that are used in the classes. But students will simply select French in their course requests, and the teachers will place the students where they are best suited. Next, we're gonna hear from Madam Angie Girard. Good evening, everyone. So lovely to see some, so many of you out this evening, um, albeit from the comfort of your homes, which is amazing. Um, we know that during course request, um, 
uh, season, if you will, that uh, students and parents in, in grades eight and nine might have some questions and some um, uh, wanting to know some information about what's to come, you know, in the years uh, uh, leading up to graduation, specifically grades 11 and 12. And so my slide uh, we call Choose Your Own Adventure because um, if you take nothing else home from, from this particular slide, uh, we would like you to uh, know that that uh, students have choice within grade 11 and 12 um, over their last two years um, transitioning from high school into post-secondary. Uh, and so each student will choose the pathway towards graduation that is best fit for them. And we'd like to emphasize um, that a lot of coaching and conversations will occur um, during the grade 10 year uh, specifically so that these decisions um, are not made um, by students on their own um, or even students and parents on their own. So there's lots of consultation and opportunity to ask and have questions answered. Um, and these decisions do not have to be made now. So this is just planting the seed of what's to come. Uh, and so just to give you a, an overview of what is to come as far as choices in grades 11 and 12, um, Students may choose to become um, what is known under the IB Diploma Program course candidates. Um, and this means that they could take a mix of IB di Diploma courses as well as provincial courses, which we offer um, in grades 11 and 12. Um, students may also choose uh, to be a course candidate uh, in addition to taking all diploma courses, but not necessarily being involved um, in the core of the diploma, which I'll speak to in just a moment. And uh, and so they would have, they could potentially have all diploma courses and, and maybe take as an elective a course called Theory of Knowledge. Okay, so there's two, two pathways under the course uh, candidate uh, qualification. And then the other option for students is to become involved as a diploma candidate within the diploma uh, program. And we like to add the word full, um, that's a GNS um, uh, edition, not, a, not a, uh, an official IB designation, but we add the word full in front of it um, so that we're crystal clear of the difference between being a course candidate uh, um, and being a, a diploma candidate. Being a full diploma candidate um, involves a student taking all of their courses as diploma courses, so no provincial courses, um, and being involved in the, the core um, of, of, the, of the program, which has three distinct elements. Um, the first is uh, a course, as I just mentioned, called Theory of Knowledge. Um, this, this course um, a, a, appears in the student's timetable, so it's scheduled within their schedule, um, and it explores real-world knowledge um, uh, with a goal to, sorry, real-world knowledge issues with a goal to um, helping students learn to question uh, their own assumptions so that they can become flexible problem solvers. Very helpful within the last two years of um, high school, but also very, very useful skills to have when they as they move into post-secondary. The second aspect of the core um, is the extended essay, uh, or the EE, uh, which is a 4,000 word academic research paper. Um, uh, students in uh, grade 10 will complete a personal project, which is the culminating piece of the MYP uh, in, uh, International Baccalaureate Program. Um, those of you who came from the junior school would have participated in the PYP's culminating piece, the exhibition. And so the extended essay is that culminating piece um, within the diploma program. And then finally, um, the third aspect of the core is something called CAS, uh, which stands for Creativity, Activity and Service. And for to, to sort of simplify it, um, it's a really important part of the program, as, as are the other two aspects. Um, but it, basically, it's a co-curricular framework. So it, I'll use what students often use with me, um, especially in their, their outgoing and their final CAS interview, is it forced me to find balance within the IB Diploma program. Uh, and, and it does just that. It, it asks students to be involved in a full co-curricular program um, so that they're not putting all of their um, eggs in the academic basket. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm going to pass it uh, over to the next person, uh, our university guidance advisors. Thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. My name is Angela Kalababa, so Miss Kalababa at GNS, 
and it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. So as we mentioned earlier, we are three advisors in the University Guidance Center, which is located on Lower Simpson. So it's a nice welcoming space and we invite you to come chat with us and look at materials at any time. Um, we send out information about opportunities to learn um, from other visitors who might come to school, um, but more on that later. So um, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself and then I'm going to pass it over to Miss Sarah McMillan, who will um, take you through the first part of our presentation today, which will be high level because we realize there's some years away. Um, from the post-secondary um, application process, but you know, it's good to work backwards and, and plan ahead. So mostly we wanna get to know you and let you know that we're here for you. And so my background is um, at the post-secondary level where I worked for 14 years at the University of Victoria. And in that role, I did international and national recruitment and admissions files. I traveled to over 60 countries, going into classrooms, um, a lot of IB schools, a lot of schools like GNS, um, to meet with families and students to talk about why Canada and how you get into different universities, um, but especially UVic, um, since that was the one I was representing, but it was really collegial. And so it was nice to build a network with schools around the world but also travel in groups with other universities and colleges so we learned a lot from each other and that network continues to this day so it's really nice to be able to share that influence um, with you all when you plan for your future so i'm also a mother i am a mom of bryce who is in grade three and connor who's in grade five and they also go to gns so some of you i may have met before and i look forward to getting to know all of you um, as time passes here. So I'm going to hand it over to Ms. McMillan. Thanks for being with us today. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. So nice to gather together and talk through some of this information. Um, as Ms. Kalibaba said, I'm Ms. Sarah McMillan, part of the University Guidance Team here at GNS. This will be my seventh year at the school. And um, similarly to, to Ms. Kalibaba, before I joined here, I too was part of the higher education world. Uh, originally from Ontario, I started working in the Queen's University recruitment office upon graduating from there and uh, embarked on some national and international recruitment at that time. Uh, and then I made my way west to Vancouver, where I spent eight years at the UBC Vancouver admissions office, um, which was a really interesting time there when they were onboarding their personal profile process, looking at supplementary information. So um, helpful to gain some insights into that part of the process, which still exists today. And then my final stop before coming to GNS was as an academic advisor at UVic. Um, so I've had you know, the opportunity to hold all these different roles um, at different universities and then bring that learning and that knowledge uh, to our community. And I did wanted to take a moment just to introduce Ms. Godfrey, who can't be with us here. She's our newest team member. Um, she's just been such a phenomenal addition to our team. We're grateful that she's joined, joined us this year. Um, so this is her first year at GNS. However, she has lots of experience um, in the university guidance world, previously the director of university counseling at Shawnigan Lake School, just up the road for seven years. And a recurring theme, she as well was in the higher education world um, before jumping into this role at the University of Victoria and worked with um, Ms. Kalibaba as well at that time. So um, I know she loves working at GNS and uh, again, it's been great to have her join our team. Um, so just to, again, introduce us a little bit more, we know it's it's early days, you know, grade eights and grade nines, um, but we do want you to know that we're here and uh, we're really looking forward to getting to know all of you uh, in a few years time. We are both university guidance advisors and career life connections teachers. And um, as Ms. Kalibaba was mentioning, you're welcome to come by and see us in our department at any time. We are located in Lower Simpson, just past the math office. And we're very fortunate to have a, a multi-purpose space there that includes all of our advising offices and a gathering place for representatives and workshops uh, and lots of resources. So feel free to uh, come and check us out at any time. Next slide, please. Okay, so, 
Um, as I mentioned, we're Career Life Connections teachers, and we um, each have sections in the grade 11 and grade 12 curriculum. It is a required course for graduation, and we're very fortunate to have this kind of curricular component um, that supports our program built right into our timetable. So we have the chance to get to know students and families um, as they move through this journey. We're really you know, focused on growth and development as it relates to careers and university planning um, in our program. And just a few quick examples of things that we would teach you know, within our class would be you know, talking about networking. You know, how, how does one network? Who's in my network? How do I meet people? Um, other pieces such as university and post-secondary research, what are the options that are out there? Um, we have some workshops about values and strengths. So, uh, you know, really diverse program in grade 11. It's mostly workshop based. Um, and then towards the end of grade 11 and into grade 12, we're quite focused on supporting post-secondary applications and course planning, um, ensuring that everything is going smoothly with those components of the process. So a question that we do um, get asked is, you know, at your age and stage, what are some things that you want to be thinking about? You know, what should I be doing? Um, and we really just wanted to share um, a message that, you know, really from the post-secondary perspective, there's no recipe, there's no specific list of things that you would need to be presenting to be a great candidate um, for the universities that are out there. Um, they, you know, if you're really into music, if you're into the arts, if you're very athletic, um, if you have a, you know, significant service passion, or you're um, just starting to take on a part-time job or working at summer camps, all of those experiences are extremely valuable. Uh, and we just encourage you to really lean into your own passions, your own strengths, your interests and think a little bit about you know what's meaningful about those activities to you i know that uh, gns is very keen on reflection <laughs> and that does continue to apply when you're thinking about schools um, and, and university planning it's not only about the what you've done but what you've really learned in that experience or you know something actually didn't go that well um, and what have you learned from that challenge and the resilience that you've built as a result of, of doing that activity and facing that challenge so we will support with with, with all these aspects um, of the kind of storytelling um, throughout our program. But we just really wanted to say, just continue to do what you're doing um, and lean into those activities that are meaningful to you. All right, next slide, please. Okay, and just a couple of quick examples for you. Again, kind of leaning on the type of the program that we are offering and what some of those workshops would, would be based in um, to support that self-awareness journey that you're on um, towards the later years of high school. You know, one is a, a values-based workshop. So similar to, you know, GNS as a school has um, core values that, um, you know, are the pillars of our community. We provide a workshop that teases apart each individual student's values um, and work to align their core values with a potential long-term career or post-secondary planning. So that would be one example. And then last but not least, next slide, please would be our Clifton Strengths Finders. Uh, there's a student edition. So just next week, we'll be launching with our grade 11s um, a Clifton Strengths Finder workshop. Some of the parents in the group might be familiar with that tool. It's a tool used worldwide. Um, but again, this is an example of trying to give students an opportunity to explore their strengths. Um, we really wanted to identify some really positive language um, that each student can really take away for themselves, um, to see themselves in a new light. Um, unique ways of, of describing it, as you'll see uh, from the screen, but we spent a couple of classes unpacking each student's individual top five strengths. Um, and that's a really empowering conversation that uh, supports the students with their applications and personal statement writing ongoing. So thank you so much. I think that's it for me. Thank you for your time and I'll pass it over to Ms. Kolebaba. Thank you very much, Ms. McMillan. Um, so hopefully <laughs> uh, you learned a lot there. We, My message is kind of repetitive, but more about the approach we take in um, the advising process. Having the opportunity to 
teach career life connections in grade 11 and 12 in person is is so valuable because we get to see the students every two weeks for those two years and that's unusual a lot of schools don't offer that opportunity because it's mostly an online course that checks a box for the ministry um but we really love getting to know each individual because and the families because everything really comes down to fit when, it, when we consider uh, success and happiness and career alignment um, in an ever-changing landscape. So post-secondary um, admissions processes do change frequently and year-to-year -year, um, admission requirements can vary based on demand and what's available um, because the, the, the program might be really sought after that year. So there's trends in the world and sometimes it's kinesiology like it has been lately, you know, um, or um, the health sector since COVID has really expanded. But we just keep an eye on the markets. We work with our post-secondary partners to understand um, what where their priorities are and where the, the spaces are growing or uh, maybe things that might be more competitive. And we advise from that perspective of industry knowledge. But um, really the whole process is a about fit and that takes partnership with the family and the student um, so the more we know you the more we can help advise in a meaningful way so we encourage you to reach out over the years and we can talk about your goals and learn more about your personalities and what what makes time pass quickly for you because that is an example of something that would be really relevant to thinking what what's a good program for me you know because we know careers are going to change a lot in the next um, five to ten years so it's about knowing oneself that's the priority to anchor yourself in um, your values like Miss McMillan was saying um, knowing what brings you energy your personality type for example um, alongside those Clifton strengths finders will will do all sorts of assessments to help students be aware of how they're unique and what makes them feel um like they shine and, and kind of acknowledge those special skills so that when they do make choices about pathways it's um really meaningful and purposeful so pathways right now um miss um, dallin was explaining that there's not a lot of choice that you would make at this point that would have a long-term impact so please don't feel pressure to to choose one thing over another strategically, it's more in the grade tenure that you're actually choosing classes that will open and close doors in the post-secondary landscape. For now, just lean in, be yourself, and try different things, and maybe reflect, uh, as Ms. McClellan said, on the experiences so that you have a good story to tell along the way. Um, so our curriculum is deliberately designed, so the Career Life Connections curriculum in grade 11 and 12 is deliberately designed from our post-secondary lens. We came in seven years ago and designed it with intention, knowing um, how students would benefit from presenting themselves in certain ways to the world. Um, and so the, the program involves learning to do quality research and learning the terminology in, for both career and post-secondary uh, prospects. And a lot of it is built on knowing oneself, whether it's looking at a life timeline, looking at your past, where have you been, pivotal moments, interesting moments, challenging moments. Um, so students literally draw out a timeline um, to, since they were born until now to see, you know, what, what were some of those impactful parts of my life to help build the story. And then um, the personality test might look at how do you find um, energy? You know, some people need some quiet space to recharge and some people really need to be around other people to recharge. So recognizing your, your kind of needs um, before you commit to where you might want to um, find a career that's satisfying. Or in terms of lifestyle for post-secondary, we have students consider things like, do you like to be anonymous or do you like to to be seen and known because maybe a, a, a university's classroom size would impact you and and we have a lot of choice in the world in terms of um, post-secondary options so thinking about fit in that regard and also qual like climate and city size obviously program but programs are always changing and and so are careers so it's helping students know themselves so they can pivot and adapt in an ever-changing world um what else do I want to tell you here? So 
we help people communicate clearly. We do these assessments so that they have language and, and really impactful wording to write statements that might only be 200 words, but using the, the word count really carefully and effectively to stand out against the crowd. Um, and then along the way, even now, as people have opportunities and maybe for service or volunteer or work, paid work, uh, maybe summer programming, we can help with that. So if if you want to help figure out how to write a resume or update it or work on a cover letter or prepare for some sort of interview, we can definitely help you with that messaging. Uh, so please do reach out and we'll change the slide now. Thank you. So it's a high level message right now and, and we do realize everybody's at different stages of the process. So we're, we're trying to um, personalize it through meetings and we'll do a lot more meetings when you get to the grade tenure but um, basically as you travel as you venture into uh, your own world and have experiences maybe pop by some campuses so you can physically feel what it's like in different learning environments and different cities so that when you do get to you know grade 11 grade 12 you have a sense of what would be good for you personally so that's a special opportunity because you have time on your side right now and also notice what makes you feel more curious what subjects that you're studying um make you feel inspired or just you know what what, what kind of discussions are you having at the dinner table um about what you learned that day or what documentaries are you wanting to watch or books that you're reading because it really does indicate um, passion and when we're hoping people can align with their passions so that they have a, a fabulous life and we'll have post-secondary institutions come visit us at GNS and also in, in Victoria generally we'll advertise that information like education fairs so it's not too early to participate in those um, you are interviewing them about fit and what makes them those schools unique what can they offer you and and also learning what an ideal candidate would look like um, once you do apply because you could start to design your application um, with that in mind so when we put the announcements out for who's coming to town or who's coming to GNS, please pay attention because that could definitely apply to you and we'd love to see you in those meetings. Um, your teachers, they know you, You're, they can really guide you about course fit and course planning. So um, talk to them and if you ever feel overwhelmed or you feel like you're falling behind, the teachers want you to succeed and do well. That's honestly the number one advice we have is work on your time management and your organizational skills because that's what's going to really help you in the senior school life. It's a busy life, but it's a um, really interesting life because you're, you're learning more about yourself, having interesting co-curriculars and meeting new friends and taking interesting courses but just stay on top of that coursework and know that there's a whole community at GNS there to support you. If you're thinking of the United States potentially um, for university or college just know um, that in grade 10 we offer a PSAT which is a preliminary SAT exam in October so that is a nice way to practice those formal tests at GNS and then if you um, if it made sense for you to do a SAT in the spring later on more like in grade 11 really but it gives you a sense to uh, to get access to these tests that Americans often have more famili familiarity with. So um, that's something to keep in mind for the U.S. system. But overall, just lean into what you love. Notice um, what subjects interest you because you're going to do better in subjects that appeal to you. And for the ones that are a little bit more challenging, just seek help. And that is what I have to say for that. So it, next slide, please. And we, we send out messages um, through the GNS news and we send out emails quite a bit as well um, for, for your community at this stage. I think the GNS news is especially relevant and useful. Um, we welcome one-on-one -on -one appointments with students and families. So just email us your availability and between the three of us, we'll sort out um, as soon as time we can meet with you. And, and remember, just stay engaged in your own life. It's There's no secret to getting into great schools and great careers. You just have to know yourself, believe in yourself. We, we try to support you in grade 11 and 12 with self-esteem and self-confidence and recognizing your authentic voice. Um, but in the meantime, just... Um, if you like something, keep doing it because some schools like UBC, they're going to ask you what are five activities that you're involved in. And if you're able to say you did one or two of them over 
a length of time and that you've grown within them, that's pretty impactful because it gives evidence of contribution. Ultimately, universities and colleges want people who are going to contribute to their community and have impact. Um, so just honestly, lean in, be yourself, and um, just reflect on what you're learning. Thank you so much. And I think we're going to pass it over now to, is it Ms. Stalin doing this part? My apologies there, having trouble finding the right button. <laughs> so um, for the course request process, you are going to be sent an email containing all of the information that will be required um, towards um, the latter part of February. What you'll find are some links um, that will direct you towards BlackBot. It's actually the exact same link that I've posted in the chat. And this link will bring you to our course request page. Um, what I want you to do is spend some time looking through the program of studies that you can see there. Now the students, I need all of you listening to this part, this is important. When the course request system is open, you will see a button that says course requests. Clicking on that button will lead you to your own grade level course request portion of the system where you can then select the courses that are required within the core and then select your particular courses that you wanna take as your elective. So your arts course and your language acquisition course. It will not let you save unless you've picked the correct number of courses and you have to hit the save button. Um, I'm going to confirm all of those details, give you some direction step by step so that we can make sure that those submit properly. Now for parents, you're going to find a form that you need to submit through Blackboard, kind of like at the beginning of the, the year where you had the blanket consents allowing your student to go on field trips. That particular form will acknowledge that you have gone through the course request with your child. And what that will mean is that you'll have to go with your kids, sit down, look at the computer with their login. You will not be able to see their course requests. It's only through the student's login. And we do this intentionally because we want the students to be taking ownership of their learning and their choices, but it is also a conversation with families. And so we ask that you sit down together, make sure that you know what courses your child is choosing. There has been some decisions made. Uh, maybe it's important family choices on maybe a language choice. And then you'll submit that form um, just as a double check. It, it helps me know that the parents are aware of what courses their, their children have chosen. Um, from that point on, uh, we proceed with making the timetable for the next year, uh, which gets released towards the end of the summer. Um, so again, you will get a message from me coming out uh, within the next couple of weeks that will give you those steps to take. You will do your course requests um, between March 4th and March 15th. And as we are um, going forward in this, what we want to really make sure that you know is that we're here to help you. We want to be able to guide you through these choices. Uh, we want to answer any questions that you have, make sure that you're aware of the, the opportunities that you have available to you here. Um, and the team is pretty large. Um, all of the teachers that are here today and, and the leadership team helping you out in this presentation we're all here to help, university guidance counselors in particular, if it's questions for moving forward into the, the latter years in the senior school. And your teachers, as mentioned before, they are the experts in knowing what your strengths are within those subjects and they can help you um, to succeed. So you need to be using their help, um, reach out to them, use your communication skills, make sure that you are knowing what it is that um, you have the strengths in. And, and you know a lot of these things, but often having adults to help guide you as well can be a really great help. And your parents know you well, use their, their guidance um, to help you as you're moving forward. Um, so again, what's really important here, and I hope that it's a theme that you've noted, is that um, you, you have a team here. Uh, we all want you to succeed. Make sure that you are, are reaching out and um, we look forward to all the wonderful things that you are about to do. I'm gonna pass it back to Carolyn, thank you. Right. Thank you, Ms. Dallin. That's a lot of information that's been coming at you. So now it is time for you to ask any questions. So 
just so that everybody gets an opportunity to ask the questions, we're asking that you use the chat function, which is at the bottom of the screen, to add your questions, and our team will respond accordingly. And if you see me shifting my face to the side, it's because I'm using two screens, so, and I need to just be monitoring the chat. So any questions, and I see Ms. Dallin has already shared some information there. She shared the link to the program of studies, um, and she's talked about the resources section of Blackboard. So anybody got any questions? Sounds like we did a good job. All right. So, um, I can answer that one. Um, so, for those students that um, are within our learning strategies group, um, so those that have an IEP or um, another learning plan that they're following. Uh, learning strategies is an option um, for those students. It would be in consultation with the student's um, learning strategies teacher, but definitely that is an option. Um, and the choice of which class to not take would be again in consultation with that learning strategies teacher. The pathway for each of those students would be very different. And so we like to guide it individually to make sure that it's the right choices. Thank you, Ms. Dallin. I see another one. What type of courses are offered to prepare for SAT or ACT? Hi there, I can jump in here. Um, so with respect to standardized testing, we do offer the PSAT, um, but that's the extent of our testing center offerings. We do have students who are writing SATs to prepare for post-secondary applications to the United States. Um, and we can work with your family to um, provide a, a tutor that we have that we know who works remotely. Um, there are some local schools that would have more structured um, <clears throat> like preparation courses, there's Khan Academy online. Um, so I'm glad to follow up with you with some more context. Um, but we do offer the PSAT as a good practice test within GNS and then have other resources to support preparation for the SAT and timing of when to write the SAT um, and that longer term planning associated with uh, US applications. Um, is it true that with an IEP that you don't need the language requirement for university, i.e. UBC? I can answer that one if you wish. So it's entirely dependent upon the student. So some students with an IEP do have a language exemption, which would be recommended by the educational uh, psychologist that did that assessment. But just because you have an IEP does not mean that you have a language exemption. Um, and so that would be another situation where consultation with the learning strategies teacher would be important to make sure that we are taking the right courses moving forward in university, towards university, I should say. All right. So... Thank you, grade eight and nine students and families. We are so happy that you were able to join us this evening. And if you do want to follow up with any aspect of this presentation or the course selection process, please feel free to reach out to the relevant person by email. We hope you have a wonderful rest of evening. Thank you.